In this video, we're going to talk about pairs in Scheme, and we'll talk about how lists are actually a special type of pair. So to start off with, I've defined two names A and B to be 5 and 6. We'll use those later. But our main topic is going to be with a pair. So to create a pair in Scheme, we'll use the cons command, and we'll say cons 0 and 2. Actually, let's do this in the REPL at first. If we say cons 0 and 2, then we get back the pair 0, 2. If we cons the symbol A and the symbol B, we get back the pair AB. And if we cons A and B together, we get back the pair 5.6. So let's copy each of these into our source code. Now I can also create a pair just by quoting it. So I can quote 10.20. And of course, I could also use the actual quote operator to say quote x dot y. And so here are all the pairs that I did. Now there's two parts to a pair. Let's take this pair. And if I get the car of that pair and the cutter of that pair, you'll see that the car is A and the cutter is B. And to be a little more explicit about what's going on here, if I take the car of 3.4 and the cutter of 3.4, and you can see the car is 3, the cutter is 4. Now you remember we used car and cutter with lists, but in fact it turns out that car and cutter are pair operations, and we'll talk more about those later. But the car is the first element in a list, the cutter is the second. Okay, so as you may have guessed, pairs and lists are related. So if I cons A to the empty list, you'll get the list with A in it. And if I cons A to the result of consing B with the empty list, oops, I need to quote that. I get the list with A and B in it. What if I do this? I'm going to quote A and the empty list. Notice I get the list with A in it. But clearly this is a pair. But it looks like it's also a list. So let's ask. Is this a pair? Or is it a list? And it turns out the answer to both is yes. And actually, let's do an example of this predicate up here as well. So if we ask if cons 0, 2 is a pair, if we ask if a.b is a pair, and you can see that those both come back as true as well. OK, so that way we'll keep that code cleaned up, and that'll be available on GitHub still. Okay, how about this? Is this a pair? Con 0, 2. And is it a list? Cons, whoops, I don't want to, I don't want that quote there. 0 with the empty, or with the list with 2 in it. So if I run this, you can see that both of these are true. And I meant to make that a pair. And then let's copy these and ask if they're lists. So when I run this, you can see that all of these are true, except this is not a list. So every pair is not a list. But it looks like so far every list is a pair. So let's ask if the empty list is a pair, because we're pretty sure the empty list is a list. And when we run this, you can see that the empty list is not a pair. So it's not true that all lists are pairs. So what's the correspondence between pairs and lists? It looks like some lists are pairs, some pairs are lists. What ultimately is the, is the differentiating factor? So just one more thing. What if we ask if this is a pair? One, two, three. So that's a list with three things in it. That should seem to be a little odd. But it turns out that's still a pair, even though there's three elements. And so if we, if we look at this particular list, if I say cons, 
1, with cons 2, with cons 3, with the empty list, that's the list 1, 2, 3. So you can see maybe now the pattern, essentially a list is any pair where the cutter is a list or the empty list by itself. And ultimately, to end the list, we'll use the empty list here. So anytime you have a list, that very last cutter has to be the empty list because the cutter always has to be a list for the pair to form a list. So hopefully that makes sense, but let's do one more example. So we'll say that pair zero is cons A and B. And that's the pair A dot B. And we're missing a close quote here. We'll define pair one to be cons A with the empty list, which is A dot the empty list. And finally, we'll define pair two to be cons A with the list B, and so that's equivalent to A paired with B, which as we'll see is equivalent to A paired with B paired with the empty list. Okay, so let's run this. So now in the REPL, I'll ask, first off, let's look at them, pair zero, pair one, pair two, and you'll see that pair one, five dot six, pair one though is just five. We don't have five dot the empty list because since that's a list, we get that syntactical cleanup. And then I thought we had defined B. I'll just make that like this and that should give us the same result. And let me run that again just to be sure. Yeah, so pair zero, pair one, pair two. And yeah, now we get what we are expecting. So if I take the car of pair zero, it's five, the cutter of pair zero, that's six. So now let's do the same. Remember pair two is five, six. So the car of that is five, but the cutter is the list with six in it. Compare that, if you'll remember, with the cutter of pair zero which is just six, so there's no actual list in the cutter. So I'll add all of this to the code so that we can have it access to it every time our code run runs. So when we run this, we get something nice. Okay, very good. So just to summarize, a pair has a car and a cutter. There's no limitations on what each of them are, but to be a list, the cutter has to be a list itself. And that continues to be the case until finally, at the end of the list, that very last cutter is the empty list itself. So the last pair in the list would be a list with one element where the car was the element and the cutter was that empty list. So finally, what applications are there for pairs? Well, you're going to see a lot of applications with pairs with your assignments. First off, anything with lists is going to be a pair with the caveat that the empty list is not technically a pair. So we'll start off, we'll do a simple application. So if I give you a pair with 30.90, you may say, well, what is that? Well, I can tell you that's a latitude and longitude. Okay, well, that's interesting and all, but what can we do with this? Well, I can pair a city with its latitude and longitude. And actually, I don't need this quote here. And I can do a couple others. Phoenix is at 33,122, and Chicago is at 42,87. So if I run this, nothing really exciting happens. It just dumps these lists. However, if I take these same values and put them in a list, So now I have a list with three of these values and let's put a define on that so that I can use it. And I'll call this cities. And of course you could think of, I could have more 
elements here. I could actually have the latitude and longitude. I could have population. I could put a lot of different information here. So now let's run this. If I say carve the city, cities, I get New Orleans. And the catter of cities is Phoenix. And the catter of cities is Chicago. Suppose I want to know the latitude. Well, I could do the latitude of a city by creating a function, and I guess I'll call this city location. We'll assume that x is a city. So if x is a city, we're going to return the cutter of x. So now we've loaded this. So now let's say, what is the city location of the car of cities? And so it's 3090, okay? And we could do the same thing for latitude. Which in that case, it would be the catter. And the city longitude is going to be very similar, except that we're going to take the cutter. So if I run this, then I can say, give me the city latitude of, if I want to do, let's do Phoenix, which is the catter of our list of cities. There it is, it's 33, and we can see that that's what it is. And to get the longitude of, of Chicago, we get the city longitude of the catter of the cities. Remember, this gives us Chicago out of that list. And then this will work. Now I can extend this to write a function that says, hey, given a list of cities with this information, now let me search through this. So let's let's do that. We'll do one simple one with just to get the location of a city. And I'll call it city info. And then we could extend it later if we wanted to. And we're going to pass in a list of cities. And a city. And that's going to be the one we're searching for. If cities is null, then there is no answer. And so I would just return the empty list in this case. Otherwise, if the car of the car of cities, that would be the next city that we're actually looking for, is equal to the city we're looking for. That means we found this. So we just need to get the latitude of the location of that city. Well, we actually have something that will give us the location of a city. We can say city location car of cities. So that's saying, give us the location of the car of the list. So if, if New Orleans matches, which is what we're checking here, then we give this. If it doesn't, then we need to pass the coder of the list to search the rest of the list. So let's do that. Otherwise, we're going to get do city info. And I don't know why for some reason city looks like it's misspelled to me, but I think that's correct. So I think it's something when it's when it's hyphenated, it looks weird to me. Okay, so city info of the cutter of cities. And that should work for us. So if we run this and load, we can say city info for Phoenix, and it didn't like that because this needs to be a symbol. And we do have an arity mismatch. Ah, because we need to say city info, we need to pass it the list of cities and the city we're looking for. Okay, that's a little better. So it looks like we have a bug in our code here. That's good. Looks like the rest is good. So city info, cities, Phoenix, and that gives us that. Now if I say city info, San Diego, it says it's undefined. Okay, so let me pass it a as a symbol. 
and now it gives me an empty list because apparently San Diego doesn't exist. And that's not really true. San Diego does exist. It just doesn't exist in our particular list. So that's a real quick introduction to pairs, applications of pairs, and how, city, how lists and pairs are related.